Hey everybody, Captain Beanard back here with another Wi-Fi battle. So, today we have a battle against Joey Fontaine. Um, we haven't battled in quite some time, but um, this is actually our fourth match here on Scarlet and Violet. So, uh, obviously, if you guys have been following me for any length of time, you know Joey. He's uh, We've battled him countless times over the years on uh, several different games. Uh, also, a semi-frequent guest on the Captain's Table podcasts. So, um... Yeah, we'll see what he brought to battle this time. It's always um, interesting and or try hard with him. So, um, looks to be a little more on the both sides, actually, this time. But, uh, yeah, he's got a really strong looking team there, as per the usual. Uh, mixed tier. Um, same here with me, as you can see. Um, we are using the same team that I uh, used in the last game. So, uh, what do I want to lead with here in the this one. I think we're going to go with... He has a lot of solid lead options, honestly. Um, I think we're going to go with the Probo Pass, actually. We don't have a lot of time to decide here, but I think that's probably going to be our best um, answer that gives us the best odds against anything he could lead with. So, yeah, we'll uh, try that and see how it works out. All right. So, looks like he is going to go ahead and lead with the Rabombi this time as we lead with the uh, Probo Pass. So that is definitely a better case scenario for us. Um, so this thing probably is going to want to set up hazards on us, so I'm not sure if I want to set up hazards right away on him. Um, he could also switch, um, but I think um, we're actually just going to go straight for a flash cannon here, try to break this thing's sash that it probably has. He is indeed just going to go for a sticky web, get the hazard up on us as I kind of anticipated. We are going to go for the flash cannon in return. It'll definitely break a sash if he has it, which it looks like indeed he does, because he just hangs on from the attack thanks to the sash. So. Um, that is not bad. Now, we have a little bit of a choice to make here because I kind of don't want the sticky webs up as it really kind of throws a, throws a monkey wrench in my plans here, so to speak. Um, but at the same time, um, I don't know if I really want to, um, I don't really know how I want to play this. Um, let me think about this for a second. Um, I kind of want to just Volt Switch out here. Because um, I kind of want to get rid of those webs, so we're just going to click Volt Switch here, see what he wants to do. He's just going to go for a Moon Blast, get some ship. Doesn't do much damage to us, but it does break our Sturdy, which is a little unfortunate. Um, we do get the Volt Switch off on him, which is nice. That is going to finish the Rabombi and knock him down to 5, so that's good. Um, as we do get the Pivot out, the only bad thing about this is um, we are going to have to show first, so... I'm not 100% sure how I want to play this situation, because I kind of want to get rid of those webs. Um, so I kind of want to come in with the Cramorant, as it's our only way to get rid of the webs. Um, I don't know that he really has any... Um, the, I don't know what he has to deal with us, but I think that's going to be our play. We're just going to have to go Cramorant and see if we can potentially get a Defog off here. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. As I said, unfortunately, he does get to show um, what he wants to bring in first. So um, we'll see what he wants to do here. <clears throat> And it is going to be the Mine Shao. So, more than likely, he's going to have some type of coverage, or he probably wouldn't have done this. Um, so, I think um, our best chance here is probably... I don't really want to just switch right away, but I think our best chance is probably to go to the Trevenant. So, that's what we're going to do, because I'm anticipating he has some type of coverage, maybe an electric move or something, um, that he would come in on the Cramorant like that, um, as we do resist this thing's stab. So we come in with the uh, Trevenant. We do get caught in the Sticky Web to lower our speed, which is unfortunate, as uh, he just goes for the Fake Out. So that actually worked out pretty well for us. Um, doesn't do anything to us, which is nice. So um, the question now is, um, this thing, these things usually carry knockoff, and I really don't want to get knocked off with the, um, the Trevenant. So, um, the question is, what do we want to bring in on this thing? I kind of want to, I, I feel like our best play is probably the Pheasantipity um, long term against this thing. So, we're going to go ahead and switch straight into that to kind of scout to see what he wants to do. Um, 
so we'll see how he wants to play it here, kind of try to scout this thing's move set out a little more. Um, as we come in with the Pheasantipity, and uh, we do get the speed reduction off the Sticky Web, obviously. And um, he is going to go for a U-turn, so that's not going to do much of any damage to us, but he does get to pivot out, so he does get to choose a matchup on us. So um, he may not have the knockoff, or maybe he just didn't want to show it yet, predicting a switch on our side. So he does come in with the Chandelure here, um, which is not great, and um, we do get some HP back with the Leftovers, which is good. Um, we're not in the best of situations against this thing, but we're also not in the worst of situations. Because we can go for a U-turn on this thing if we want to, just to kind of scout it and see what it wants to do. Um, I don't know that it can really have... Um, well, actually, it could certainly have a psychic move to hit us with, so... Um, and we may or may not be able to take that. Um, so... Does he have the psychic move? That's the question. Um, I feel like we switch... He may very well have the Psychic move on hand. Um, so I think we, trying to read that, we switch into the Probo Pass. I mean, we could U-turn, but I don't want to take a big shot on Pheasantipity. And these things are usually choice, so I want to kind of see what he's going to choice lock himself. So we go into that uh, Probo Pass. Sticky Web's going to lower our speed, unfortunately. And uh, he is going to go for the Shadow Ball, which sucks. That's probably going to do a ton of damage to us, and it takes us down to about half. He does get the special defense drop, which is really unfortunate, because um, that means even after the leftovers recovery, we can't take another one. So um, the only good news is now we know he's probably locked into Shadow Ball. So with that information, um, I think we just go into the Roaring Moon here. So that's what we're going to do. As He's actually going to switch the Chandelure, interestingly enough, and he's going to switch directly back into the Mine Shao. So... Um, that's an interesting move there. I'm not sure what he was reading. Maybe he was reading the Roaring Moon to come in. Um, and if he did, that's definitely a smart move on his side, because we do indeed come in with the Roaring Moon. And um, after the Sticky Web speed reduction, I don't know who's going to outspeed who here, because we are choice Scarf. Unfortunately, if this thing is Sash, um, I don't think we do much to it. Um, so I think we actually... He could fake out again. Um, that's a possibility. This is a tough decision for us. He could U-turn again as well, actually. But I think we do... We have to get rid of the sticky web, I think, one way or the other. So I think... I think we do go into the Cramorant here this time. Because um, he may fake out. He may go for a fighting move. He may U-turn. But either way, I think we go Cramorant see what he wants to do as he goes for the u-turn so that's unfortunate so we're just kind of caught in an endless cycle of him pivoting here which is really unfortunate uh could have got our hazards up to try and prevent this but um just kind of is what it is so um, he does get some ship in the pivot out on the cramorant and what is he going to switch into here is the question it is going to be back into the chandelure so um now the question becomes as we get some hp back from the leftovers um, I don't think we want to stay in on this matchup, um, especially if this thing's choice. Although it might be Scarf based on the damage output we saw, although it's hard to say because um, Probo Pass is pretty bulky. Um, I do we do resist both this thing's stab with the um, with the Roaring Moon, so I think we just go back into Roaring Moon here, um, doing so much switching here, which. Uh, having Stealth Rock up on his side of the field would be really beneficial for, but um, I was hoping we could defog those webs. But anyway, he comes in. we come in with the Blue Moon, Roaring Moon, get the sp Sticky Web Speed Reduction. He does go for the Shadow Ball, kind of as anticipated, and uh, that is not going to do too much chip damage to us. Um, no special defense drop, which is nice. And now I think we take this opportunity to just go for a big knockoff on something, so that's exactly what we're going to do. And uh, we'll see what he wants to do. He stays in, outspeeds us, so he's definitely Scarf. He goes Shadow Ball again. Um, he gets a lot more damage this time. Um, we go for the knockoff in return. That's definitely going to one-shot the Chandelure from that range, knocking him down to four, which is incredible. And, um, of course, getting rid of his choice Scarf that we knew he had. So, um, yeah, that's pretty solid for us. As now he does come back in with the Mind Shao. So... Um, the question for us here is going to be, um, what do we, how do we want to handle this thing? We definitely switch. The only question is, what do we switch into? Um, Cramorant might be the answer. 
um, as he could definitely be going for a fighting move here. Um, so I feel like I feel like we do just go into the Cramorant. It would be nice to get rid of these sticky webs, um, but I don't know if we're going to really get the opportunity to do that. As uh, we do switch the Cramorant in here, and he is going to U-turn once again. So we do take more chip damage on the Cramorant, and he does get the pivot once again. So we'll see what he wants to come in with here uh, to face the Cramorant. Um, if we could get the Defog off, that would be really nice, but... Um, he is going to go ahead and come in with the... Okay, he comes in with the... Um, with the Grimmsnarl. So we get some HP back with the leftovers. Now, the only bad news about this is that this thing could definitely be packing Taunt. So, it, if he does Taunt us, obviously that's bad. Um, I think just to scout for the Taunt, we probably just go Surf here. Um, so we're just going to surf here, actually, as he does go for the light screen instead. So he's going to go ahead and um, increase the special defense for several turns. We go for the surf, um, which is not going to do much of any damage, but we are going to go ahead and catch that uh, fish, the Aracuda, to activate the Gulp Missile, which is kind of Cramorant's uh, feature here. So if he attacks us, that's going to hit him for some damage and drop his defense. So we get some HP back with the leftovers. This turn, we definitely go for the Defog. There's no reason not to as he goes for a Reflect this turn, which is actually incredible for us. Increases his physical defense for several turns, but it doesn't matter because we go for the Defog to go ahead and blow away his Sticky Web, his Light Screen, and his Reflect. So that is incredibly beneficial for us, obviously. Um, and uh, now we're going to go ahead and get some HP back with the Leftovers. So. Um, in a way, I want to chip this thing farther, but in another way, I kind of want to take this chance to switch back into Probo Pass to see if I can get my hazards up. Um, so he may switch out just knowing that uh, we can always defog his hazards away if he indeed chooses to, or his screens away if he chooses to set them back up. Um, we're not going to be doing too much chip damage to this thing either, so I think we switch to the Probo Pass here. I think that's our play, so that's what we're going to do. So, um, we're going to see where that takes us here, um, see how he wants to play this, so there it is, and um, he does go for a Spirit Break this turn, um, which is going to do just some chip damage to us, not too much, uh, it does give us a special attack drop, which might hurt us a little bit, um, not too much though, um, as we get some HP back with the leftovers, and now we definitely get take the opportunity to set our Stealth Rock up 100%. He goes for the light screen to get that special defense increase on all of his Pokemon for several turns as we go for the Stealth Rock, get that entry hazard uh, of ours up on him, which is nice. Better late than never, I suppose. And um, then, of course, we are going to get some HP back with the leftovers. So I think at this point we just go ahead for the Flash Cannon to try and get as much damage as possible on anything he leaves in. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do, as uh, he just goes for a Reflect, get that physical defense increase uh, for several turns here. We go for the Flash Cannon, um, probably not going to do too much damage, and indeed it doesn't, um, through the uh, Light Screen. We do get some HP back with the Leftovers, which is not bad. Um, and now we're in an interesting situation. Um, how do we want to play this? The screens are up, which is terrifying, obviously. Um, I kind of want to just Volt Switch back to Cramorant to try and get rid of that, although it will get rid of our hazard too, but um, kind of is what it is. I think we just Volt Switch here either way, as uh, he does, does go for the parting shot, so um, that's going to go ahead and drop our attack and special attack even farther, which is unfortunate. Um, so this is going to really depend on what he brings in here. Um, if he brings the Blood Moon in, that's going to be pretty terrible, as uh, he does in fact <laughs> bring the Ursaluna Blood Moon in, so that sucks. He does take some Stealth Rock damage, um, and then we do Volt Switch, which obviously um, will not touch this thing. So um, he is going to get some HP back with his leftovers there, and um, yeah, we're not in a great spot against this thing. We do get some HP back with our leftovers, and uh, yeah, we would easily go down to a ground move here. However, I don't. I'm very hesitant to switch anything in on a Blood Moon against this thing. So I think our play might just be to let Probo Pass go down here. Um, we're just going to try to attack him on the off chance we can get some damage. So we're just going to go for the Flash Cannon. He does actually outspeed us and go for a Calm Mind. So that is absolutely horrifying. So he's going to get a special attack and special defense increase here as we go for the Flash Cannon. So he's setting up with the Ursa Luna, which is absolutely horrifying. 
Um, he gets some HP back with the leftovers, and this is really bad, actually. So um, we are also going to get some HP back with the leftovers here. So thanks to those double special attack drops, we are doing no damage to this thing. So we really have to switch something in, and anything we switch in is going to be in massive danger of getting one shot. So, um, I mean, we could let him calm mind up and then just try to come in with something physical and, and take him out with that. Um, we're kind of just in a bad spot no matter what way you slice it right now. Um, the only question is how far will he calm mind up with this thing? Um, this thing is slow, so that's the only benefit we have. Um, I don't think we can risk switching anything in on this thing because we're going to need all of our other Pokemon to try and get rid of it. So I think we just stay in and Flash Cannon, hoping for either a special defense drop or that he abandons the strategy, which after one Calm Mind, it does just go for the Earth Power outright, which is completely fine. That takes out the Provo Pass and knocks us down to um, five Pokemon. So um, he does get some HP back with the leftovers once, you get, once again, which is terrible. So... We're going to have a pretty huge decision on our hands to make right now, and that's how do we want to try to deal with this thing. Uh, we do have quite a lot of options, actually, um, to potentially deal with this thing. Um, I kind of want to go into Ninetales. Um, I kind of want to go into Pheasantipity to try and poison this thing. Um, I think Pheasantipity might be the answer to try to get a poison on this thing because he's still behind the screens right now so I think that's the play because unfortunately he is still behind the screens for probably ample amount of turns here so we come in the Fezidipity and um, we just have to hope how many turns of the screens does he have left here we don't know um, so he has it looks like he has another three on light screen and another many on three or four on reflect so we really just have to hope we can hit the Toxic here. <laughs> that's our that's our play, is uh, we hope we can hit the Toxic. Um, and so we could Terra to try and sustain an, an Earth Power, but um, I don't think that that's worth it. Um, so we just Toxic and hope to God we don't miss. So we go Toxic, thank God we do not miss. So we do badly poison the Ursaluna, putting it on a timer, which is incredible, cutting its defenses, or cutting its physical defense as well. He does go for the Earth Power. Um, we can't take that, obviously, at plus one, so that does take the Pheasantipity out and knock us down to four, but Pheasantipity kind of did what it needed to do here by getting the Toxic Poison on the Ursaluna, so um, that's really all that I can ask for. Um, so I think now um, we could come in with the... I think we come in with the... We could come in with Cramorant. We know he's going to Blood Moon. This thing is just really hard to deal with now, especially with the setup. Um, I think... I think we do have to come in with Ninetales, though, actually, to get the sun up um, instead. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to come in with Ninetales. Um, we are going to get the sun up here, um, get the drought to turn the sunlight. Um... I think what we do is we actually go for a solar beam to try to chip this thing down. I think that's our best play. Um, so that is, in fact, what we're going to do. So uh, he's actually going to go ahead and bust out his Terra now um, on the Ursaluna. This could be bad. What is he going to Terra into here? It is going to be a fighting type, so that's unfortunate. He is going to lose his weaknesses as we're starting to push the edge of the timer. Um, so we are going to go for the solar beam here. Uh, we are going to get a solar beam on this thing, so it is um, going to not have to charge thanks to the sun. How much damage is it doing? That does absolutely nothing to this thing, as uh, he goes for a blood moon, obviously, and uh, takes us out. So that's pretty bad. Um, Ninetales is going to go down, and um, we're going to go down to three. So this Ursaluna is really, really doing serious damage to us. Um, we only really have one chance, I think, against this thing at this point. Um, and I think that one chance is going to be... Um, it's going to be Roaring Moon, I think. Roaring Moon is going to be our one chance to stop this thing. So we're going to come in with Roaring Moon. We are going to get that attack increase from the Protosynthesis. And uh, obviously we know we outspeed him. Um, we are going to, I think... Um, 
we have to outrage. I think we might have to Terra to see if we can live um, and attack here. So we're going to, I think, Terrastalize to a Steel type. So just in case the outrage isn't enough to take him out, um, and then we're going to outrage. That's our that's our only plan here to try and take this thing down. I think so. We're gonna go ahead and Terrastalize um, into a pure Steel type, losing our Fairy weakness, hoping that he goes for the Moon Blast or something on us. Um, that we can take one. Um, so there's the Terra Steel right there. As we go for, he actually goes for the Vacuum Wave. So he's got that as his last move. He does not have um, Moon Blast. He has Vacuum Wave as his last move. So that just screwed us over right there. So um, yeah, that's awful. So that did not work at all. So um, Roaring Moon goes down, and we go down to two. So this Ursa Luna has really just, really just screwed us basically as. Uh, He's going to take some damage from the poison, get some HP back from the leftovers, and uh, I think the Ursa Luna pretty much just did us in in this one, because there's really no nothing we can do at this point that's going to matter. So we are going to come in with the um, with the Trevenant. We don't have much time left on the clock. Um, we're just going to go ahead and go straight for a Horn Leech. Um, we know we outspeed, so Horn Leech is going to do nothing to this thing, and that is maximally physically defensive if I've ever seen it, so, um, and then we get one shot by Blood Moon, so Ursa Luna is just, um, just too much, um, it looks like, so, um, it is gonna get some HP back with the leftovers, and, um, then it is gonna take more, um, poison damage, so, um, it looks like it has, uh, it still has a couple turns left in it after, um, all that damage. So it's, we're not going to really get to find out what happens here because um, the battle is going to be over as we come in with Cramorant. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for us. So we're just going to go ahead and, um, I guess, click Air Slash, not that it matters. And uh, that is going to be game. So, yeah. We are going to lose that one. 4-1 um, to Joey Fontaine. Um... It was a hard-fought match, um, definitely a little back and forth, but um, the Ursa Luna was just too much. Um, the Ursa Luna Blood Moon is just an absolutely insanely overpowered Pokemon. Um, and I, th I do think we could have played that a little bit better, though. Um, but we were just kind of, when he did come in with it, we were just kind of in a bad spot. And, um, yeah, there wasn't um, a ton we could do, although, like I said, I think we could have probably done a little bit more to avoid getting stuck in that situation, but um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it was just um, a rough one for us with uh, the Earth Luna. Things were going pretty good until that thing, but um, good match nonetheless. So um, that's it. Thanks for watching again, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy, and stay tuned for more new battles in the future. So that's it, and we'll see you next time.